This is Dominic with Wholesale ATV, and I wanted to thank you for your purchase and give you what all the other customers that purchase in store get, and they get a once over and kind of a rundown of what the vehicle is all about and how to operate the vehicle. And since you're buying online, or you bought online, you don't really get that full once over. So let me take you around and show you what's going on with all these vehicles. Now this one, this is the 150 model. Um, it's uh, pretty pretty similar as the other T-Forces as in main operation. You have front brake here, rear brake. This one's an automatic, so there's a little shifter on this side that you push forward, it puts it in drive. Middle spot is neutral, rear's reverse. Starting this is sort of like the other one too. Turn the key one click to the right, make sure you hold the brake, either front or rear and hit the starter. Now it's not gonna start unless you have this kill switch dead center. It clicks to the one to the right, one to the left, or center. Now there are some different models that you have to push in this button for it to actually start. It has to be pressed in, not on this one. This one you just make sure it's in the center. You have your light switches and your brights right there. Um, this one, like the others, has a fuel switch on the side. It's that silver switch as an on-off feature. Now, if you're going to be leaving this sit for more than you know a week, you're going to want to switch it to off, start the bike up, and let it run until it dies out. That means the carburetor is has no gas in it anymore, and that gas sitting in that carburetor isn't going to gum it up, and it'll make it hard to start if it does. So you want to clean that gas out and let it sit. Um, on this one, it has an automatic choke function, so you don't really have to worry about choking the carburetor. Um, on the other models, you're going to have to you're going to have to put the choke on and off, say on cold starts, for it to run correctly. You're going to have to warm it up first. But this one will do that on its own. Um, like the other models, it has a bar right here to adjust alignment. A nut on either side, and you spin this bar to adjust the alignment on each tire. Make sure your bar is straight up here first before you do. Um, on the back side has a little lever. Lift that lever up and take you to the other side where you can see the battery is underneath this fender. You should have a fuse running off of it into, into here. Now that fuse is going to be in a little clear box and it's a glass fuse. So if you notice that when you're trying to start this model up, and no lights come on and it's not trying to start at all, that fuse is probably blown. Now you have an extra fuse inside of that fuse box, just slap the new one in there and everything should be fine. Dominic with Wholesale ATV again, and I wanted to go over the other models that I had described earlier on the another video. This is the uh, 250. This is the one that has the kill switch that you'd have to push in to get it to start. So you'll notice when you cut it off that that switch needs is a little firm on press. You'll notice that when you press it in, it clicks. And when it does that, it's ready to be started. And this one, as the other one, they all have this throttle control screw. This throttle control screw, if you run it in, it blocks the throttle so they can't go as fast. Bring it out, it goes faster. <clears throat> now, each one of these has that exact same thing, that, that throttle control screw, and it's very important. As well as this brake parking brake. You squeeze the brake, push this pin down, release the brake, puts the parking brake on so it doesn't move. To release that, squeeze the brake. It's released. And this one has got a clutch on it. This one's a little different than the others. It's a clutch oriented one. So you have drive, neutral, well you have reverse, neutral, and then three gears. So you, to go through those three different gears, you're gonna have to pull the clutch in, lift up, release the clutch under power under on the throttle. You do have some lights here that tell you if you're in neutral or reverse. Um, I also got to remind you guys, you want to run 93 in here or non-ethanol fuel. Um, it's going to run best on those. On this particular model, the battery is underneath of the seat, which has a gold lever. Pull that, and it releases the seat when you get in there and see the battery. We do have chargers that come in the box, but they do not have an auto kill feature on them, so it will charge the battery up and continue to charge after the battery's fully charged. I recommend you get a Shoemaker battery tender, which we have a link to on our website, and that will has an auto kill feature that when the battery is fully charged, it will stop charging. Um, on this battery as well as your fuse box, 
no lights are coming on when you try to start it and it's, the starter isn't engaging, that fuse is probably blown and there's an extra fuse inside of there already waiting for you. Okay, let's hop on over to this other model. It's a 200 model, which is a 170 cc motor. The label is a 200. Um, it has the for all control screw and the brake as well. This parking brake's a little different. It's got a, a lever that you're gonna have to pull down to set that parking brake. Same release method though. Pull it in and it releases. Brights are right here. Kill switch. And the same as all of our other models, you're gonna have to hold the brake and press the starter for the starter to engage. This one has a hand shifter and is an automatic. So it's just, you have a forward gear that's drive, neutral, and reverse. All of our models come with brake and oil in them first. You're gonna need to change the oil after a full first gas tank has been run through. On this one, the oil fill is right here on the side as they all are on the right hand side of the vehicle. This dipstick is going to have an indicator that tells you if your oil level is correct, if you have it's full or low. Um, you're going to want to use 1040 ATV oil when you're refilling it. This break-in oil is a thick oil and it helps break the motor in and get it running correctly. But you're definitely going to need 1040 ATV four cycle oil and it only takes about three quarters of a quart or a little bit more for the 170s. It's not much. I want to let you know when you're going to do this oil change, you're going to need a 17 millimeter uh, ratchet or um, socket. And it's right underneath the case. It's the biggest drain bolt that you're gonna, the biggest bolt you're gonna see under there. Break that loose, oil's gonna fall out of it. Um, put that drain plug in after you see that that steady trickle's done, no more oil's falling out of it. You put that drain plug back into it, seat it in there, but don't fully hard tighten it strip those out you just want to get it snug in there and then you fill up on the right hand side and this concludes our uh, once over on the different models the 150 the 250 and the 170 if you guys have any questions or any troubles just give us a call at the service department and we'd be more than help happy to help you out thanks and have a good day guys